Hey everyone, I'm super excited to share this presentation on using LineChain and Weaviate to build awesome applications using large language models. Let's begin with what LangChain is, just in case you aren't familiar. Um, so this quote is taken right from their documentation, and it states that large language models are emerging as a transformative technology, enabling developers to build applications that they previously could not. But using these large language models in isolation is often not enough to create a truly powerful app. The real power comes when you are able to combine them with other sources of computation or knowledge. And in this presentation, we'll really see how using Weaviate helps the large language model. The presentation goes in this order. Um, so first, we'll start off with the LLM chains. And what this does is it enables, it enables us to combine multiple inferences together. So this is a step-by-step -step task. Um, so in this presentation, I have an example of asking the AI chatbot to use the previous output as um, and can take that into consideration for its next output. Next, I'll go over combined documents. Um, so what this is, is it solves a problem of the limited token length. Um, so I will share four techniques that are implemented in LangChain, and I have a, uh, a visualization for each. Next is tool use, and this connects LLMs to tools that can help execute it. Um, so for example, connecting it to Weavey or a calculator. And again, I have a, a quick demonstration on that. And then for chat vector DB, um, in the beginning, we'll go through the documentation in LangChain, and then we'll end with a demo on using LangChain and Weavey. So make sure you stick to the end. As you can guess from the name, sequential chains execute their links in a sequential order. So it takes one input um, slash output, then it uses the output for the next step. Um, so let's look at an example of sequential chains in a conversation between a bot and I. Um, before we get into it, I want to credit the originator of this example. Um, their name is Jagley on GitHub. And in the blog post, um, I credit the author so you can um, link right to the GitHub repository. All right, let's get on to the example. All right, so here I'm asking the bot, what type of mammal lays the biggest eggs? And the response is, the biggest eggs laid by any mammal belong to the elephant. And as you can see in the emoji, that's a little confusing. There's a little bit of hallucination going on. So what I'm going to do is ask it to, it's like a fact checker. So I'm going to say, okay, given this statement, how can you improve your answer? So let's see. Um, so... Here is a statement, and it's the blue text. Um, that's why it is colored differently. So given the above output, make a list of the assumptions you made when producing the above statement. So here it gave uh, four assumptions that it used to generate the statement above. So now I'm going to ask, OK, so for the list of assertions, um, determine whether it is true or false. And you can see that in the curly brackets and in the um, color text, this is what it's using. All right, so let's see what it says. Um, the first one is true, so the elephant is a mammal. Mammals lay eggs is false. And it also gave the, um, it also uh, fact checked itself a little bit with most mammals give birth to live young. The third one, eggs come in different sizes is true. And then the fourth one is false. Elephants do not lay eggs. So, all right, given that, um, how would you answer the question? which is which mammal lay the biggest eggs. Um, and here, all right, and then we can see that it has, uh, this question could not be answered because elephants do not lay eggs and most mammals give birth to live young. And there you go, it has it right. And that's kind of the sequential chaining that I was referencing earlier of um, it kind of fact checking itself. All right, let's go over combined documents. So what this does is it overcomes the limitation of the input token length. Um, so in LangChain, there are four techniques that are implemented, and I will go into greater detail. Um, but at a high level, I'll be going over stuffing, MapReduce, Refine, and MapReBank. I just want to make a note that there is not one that is better than another performance-wise. It is just based on your application. Um, so make the decision as you wish. Okay, the first technique is stuffing. And this is a simplest method where you stuff all of the related data into the prompt as context, and then you pass it to the uh, language model. Next, we have MapReduce. So what this does is it involves an initial prompt. Um, so what is a golden doodle? And 
it is used on each chunk of data. So we're going to the vector database, we're grabbing the relevant documents, and now we're going to um, we're going to add in our initial prompt. All right. So then a different prompt. So we, here we have a golden doodle is a mix. Um, we have three different responses. And now the next prompt is to collect the answers and combine it into one sentence. Goes into the large language model and boom, we have a golden doodle is a mix of a golden retriever and poodle. Okay, next is refine. This one is interesting because it has a local memory that is used to refine the output. Um, so an example of this is for the large language model to summarize the search results one by one and use the sum summary generated so far to refine its output. Um, so as you can see in the animation, the green and blue document um, went into the large language model, outputted the orange document, and then on the next round it used the orange document and the remaining search results to output the answer of a golden doodle is a uh, mix of golden retriever and poodle. All right, so map rank is a method that involves running an initial prompt on each chunk of data, and from here it will assign a score based on the certainty of its answer. So here we have three, seven, and five, and now we're gonna rank it. And then we're going to use, similar to the stuffing method, we're gonna put that into the large language model to output the uh, response. Next, we'll be going over tool use. So this is equipping language models with tools like Weaviate, a code executor, or even a calculator. I am asking it to write Python code for the bubble sort algorithm, and I'm asking it to generate code. I'm passing it through the Python REPL, which is a code executor that is implemented in Langchain, and it outputted the response. And then from here, I'm asking the language model is based on the output, is this Python code correct? And then it says yes. Now we'll get into chat vector DB. So Langchain has many pre-built chains. So we're gonna go through an example of using chat vector DB, of it pointing to our vector database. And we'll take a deeper dive into how this is implemented in Langchain. Okay, so now we're in the code base for the chat vector database. Um, we have the base.py and prompts.py. All right, let's start off with prompts. All right, so the template is that given the following conversation and a follow-up question, rephrase the follow-up question to be a standalone question. All right, so we're, we have the chat history and the follow-up input um, as the question, and the standalone question is using the uh, prompt template. And then the prompt template is using the following pieces of context to answer the question at the end, um, if you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know, don't try to make up an answer. And this is um, helping with the hallucination problem. All right, so it takes in the context and it has the question and then the prompt template. So this will only output four search results and you'll see this in the uh, base.py file. And you'll see that right here. So in this, um, in this file, you have the two main components of the uh, using the chat history and using the query to the uh, vector database. Now on to the fun part of using Langchain and Weaviate together. Um, so on my screen, you can see that um, this is where we are connecting to our Weaviate instance, um, just localhost 8080. And then in vector store, this is where you're specifying which class you want Langchain to um, see. And then along with the class, the property. Um, so I'm using the podcast search demo that Connor has created on GitHub. Um, I can add a link to it and make sure that you star the repository. Um, but within PodClip, which is just the transcriptions of I think almost 20 podcasts, it has content. So that's the conversation that Connor is having with whoever he has on the podcast. This is where we have the QA, so the chat vector DB chain from LLM. We're specifying the OpenAI model. And then we're storing the chat history. Um, so just using the stuffing method that we went over previously. It's really cool that this is so simple and it's what, almost like 20 lines of code. Um, just to get this started. So let's get into it with going into the terminal and asking the large language model what were the features released in 117. First, let's make sure that we are running the demo. All right, so let's ask a question. What features were released 
and we v8 117. All right, so replication in hybrid search as well as ref to vec were released in 117. So ref to vec is specific to weva and that is a cool thing with having it the large language model connected to a vector database is that it's able to grab the um, context that is relevant to your application. So um, I guess if I ask like a general large language model, what is ref to vec it'd be like, I have no clue what that is. Um, but when we add in the context of the weva 8 podcast, it understands it. Let's ask a follow-up question of explaining hybrid search. What is hybrid search? And there you go. It's also able to explain what hybrid search is and that it was also implemented in weva 8 117. Um, so this is just a quick demo and a few queries of using this. Um, but you are able to run this on your own um, and I recommend cloning the repository of the podcast search to get started using this. I hope you enjoyed and happy chatting with your data. Bye!